There is hardly any view that is more widespread than the view that somehow or other the Great Depression was produced by a failure of private business. That view is held not only by those who are in favor of greater role of government. It is held by almost everybody. I venture to suggest that if you go to any bankers, the people who are here today at this banking conference, and if you talk to them, I venture to say nine out of ten of them, if, if, if they didn't, hadn't heard what I'm going to say, <laughs> that nine out of ten of them would say, well, of course, the Great Depression was a failure of private business. It was due to an overextension, overspeculation in the 1920s, or it was due to an excessive concentration of wealth in the hands of the wealthy at the expense of the poor in the 1920s, or it was due to speculative investment abroad, or whatnot. But it was a failure of private business, and government had to step in in order to rescue private business from its own failure. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The Great Depression was produced, in my opinion, and I may say this is a, not a random opinion. I will be glad to refer you to a several hundred page book in which it is documented. I won't tell you who the author is. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eccles did that. It was produced, the Great Depression was produced by a failure of government, by a failure of monetary policy. It was produced by a failure of the Federal Reserve System to act in accordance with the intentions of those who established it. It was produced by a failure of the Federal Reserve System despite the presence of knowledge on the part of many of the people in the system about the right course of action. It's interesting to speculate for a moment about why this myth is so widespread. The answer is really very simple in this case. Private enterprise has no press agents. The free market has no press agents. The government has a great many press agents. The Federal Reserve has a great many press agents. And the Federal Reserve, of course, would never admit, never proclaim, that it produced the Great Depression. On the contrary. And again, I don't mean to be criticizing individuals. We're talking about the way institutions operate. You and I are the same as all the rest of us. We're all the same. The hardest thing in the world is for anybody to admit that he made a mistake. If any one of us makes a mistake, we can always find somebody else to blame. And if you read, as I have for my sins had to read, the annual reports of the Federal Reserve System over a 50-year period, <laughs> there's only one element of humor that lightens that task, and that is the cyclical fluctuation in the powers of the Federal Reserve. In a good year, when things are good, when the economy is booming, you will read that the Federal Reserve, by its wise policy, by its efficacious management of money, has produced this fine situation. However, let things get bad, and all of a sudden the tone of the annual report is different. Then you discover that despite the best efforts of the Federal Reserve, Outside forces combine to produce difficulties. Even at the depth of the Depression in 1933, when in the spring of that year, the Federal Reserve System, which had been established in order to prevent banking panics and keep banks from closing, when the Federal Reserve System itself closed its doors, and you had a banking holiday for seven days, and when, over the previous three years, a third of the banks of this country closed their doors and went broke because, in my opinion, of the poor policy followed by the Federal Reserve System. Even in 1933, if you read the annual report, you will discover how much worse things would have been if the Federal Reserve hadn't behaved so well. Now, as I say, I don't blame the members of the Federal Reserve for that. Any one of us would do the same thing. We have to find somebody to blame. But as an objective scholar, I can tell you what the facts are. The facts were that from 1929 to 1933, the total quantity of money in the United States, the amount of currency, the amount of 
bank deposits, what Mr. Eccles referred to as M2. That total amount of money declined by one-third. The total number of banks went down by one-third. And why did the quantity of money decline? It declined because the Federal Reserve System failed to prevent the decline. The Federal Reserve System could have prevented the decline at all times. There never was a moment during that period when the Federal Reserve did not have the power to prevent the decline in the quantity of money. If it had prevented the decline in the quantity of money, you might still have had a recession. But it would have been a garden variety recession. It would have been over in the middle of 1930 or early in 31 at the latest. It would not have been the major catastrophe, not only for this country, but throughout the rest of the world. The, uh, moreover, this is not only hindsight. At all times, the people at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and at a number of other banks were pleading with the Federal Reserve Board in Washington to do the right thing. At all times, there were people in Congress who were arguing that the Federal Reserve System should take a different course. At all times, there were outside commentators. One of the Canadian banks was particularly prescient. But there were other commentators who were pointing out the disastrous effects on the American economy of the restrictive policies that the Federal Reserve System was following and which was causing, was permitting, and facilitating a whole series of bank runs. So the Great Depression was not produced by a failure of business. On the contrary, it was produced by a failure of government and a failure of government in an area in which responsibility had been assigned to government since the founding of this country. The Constitution of the United States it gives Congress the power to coin money and set the value thereof. And it was in the management of this fundamental function of government that government failed and produced the Great Depression. We have learned from that failure. The Federal Reserve will not fail in the same way again. This time it will fail in a different way. <laughs> this time it has been failing, not by producing a Great Depression, but by producing an inflation. Because just as you will hear the story that it was business that was responsible for the Depression, so you will today hear the story that it is labor and management that are responsible for inflation. It is the same kind of a myth. Inflation is made in one place and one place only, Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C., the chief source, immediate source of inflation, is a Greek temple on Constitution Avenue in which, which houses the Federal Reserve Board. An accomplice, and a major accomplice, of course, sits in the halls of Congress uh, in Washington. They are a major accomplice because you tell them to be. The American people have been telling Congress for many years, spend more money on us, please. But they've been telling us, don't raise our taxes. Congress has been listening. It's been spending more money on you. But on the other hand, it's been very unwilling to raise taxes. As a result, it has imposed inflation as a tax. That's one tax that you don't have to vote for, but you have to pay.